Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Money Podcast, your source for all things money. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Shelly Giordano on the line, and she's co-founder over at Academy of Home Equity and Financial Planning at the University of Illinois. Shelly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam. Pleasure to be here. So uh, excited to get into today's topic. So we're going to talk about home equity as a buffer asset and retirement income. Um, but before we do that, let's talk a little bit more about the Academy. Tell us a little bit more about what you're up to, please. Yeah, great. Yes. Yeah. so our mission um, is to help uh, American retirees understand the value of their number one asset, which is their home, um, about two-thirds of the net worth of the average American is tied up in his home. And yet, Americans don't generally think of their home um, as a as a, a vehicle to help them um, weather uh, the volatility out there in in the retirement uh, market, so to speak. So, for the last about eight years, we've had a group of academicians and practitioners, um, uh, mathematicians, <laughs> actuaries, uh, gerontology. Um, financial gerontologists, a whole group of people who are interested in, in helping make sure that Americans re can retire securely, looking at the role of, uh, of housing wealth and how that asset uh, can be put in play to help people um, weather the, the, the volatility out there in the markets, which has been sort of a theoretical question up until now. It's just been the math, but people are really feeling it right now um, since the uh, since we've moved from being in an 11 year uh, bull market to just this precipitous drop. So people are opening up their um, retirement uh, 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 investment portfolios and recognizing that they're not um, holding the same value that they did before. And people just generally understand that you don't want to have to sell at a loss you know you want to you want to buy low and sell high and so um, that's been the case uh, for the last few years but we've now just finally seen the pain um, that uh, that uh, happens when you have to um, start selling your invested funds at a at a lower rate so, so um, um, yeah go ahead you mentioned um, something that, uh, you know, a lot of Americans don't really know about these assets. I mean, I know this is going to vary, obviously, from, you know, person to person, situation to situation, right? But why, what do you think are some – and you've done a lot of work and it's been in this space for a long time. What do you think are some of those reasons for that? Well, I think it's more of a behavioral finance issue. I mean, we've, we've looked mm -hmm. at it and looked at it and looked at it, and, um, you know, not – even considering doing a reverse mortgage to help free up some of that uh, equity without having to make a mandatory monthly payment seems, you know, like a, something that most people mm -hmm. would be interested in at least knowing something about. But people are very emotional about their homes, and, and you know, we, we just are. And so uh, I think for a lot of people, you think about your house, actually you are thinking of it as an asset, but just sort of as if everything else goes kerflui, I still have my house. Mm. Instead of thinking of it proactively to, to deploy your home as an asset to protect all your, all your other assets so you don't have to mm -hmm. you know, be drawing on undervalued invested funds, um, you can substitute uh, using draws from your home via a reverse mortgage um, and uh, uh, you know, sort of protect and conserve the whole picture rather than um, going through your portfolio, taking all your distributions that you need to support your spending without regard to the value of, of the portfolio, and then and then as a last resort going, oh gosh, the only thing I've got left now is my house, so then you either have to move or then you try to take out a reverse mortgage at that point and you have to, there's, you know, there's so much spending that needs to be supported through the reverse mortgage that it's just not, it's just not viable. Um, for supporting a you know a 30 year retirement so um, so I you know and 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 honestly Adam I mean, reverse mortgages have had a bad 
bad reputation um, over the over the years, um, which is really unfortunate because uh, HUD FHA, which regulates the the uh, home equity conversion mortgage, which represents about 95% of reverse mortgages out there, they've really worked hard to um, make sure that that reverse mortgages are um, only uh, provided to people for whom it will be a sustainable solution. Um, and um, you know, really worked hard to um, negate the, the the kind of abuses in the past. So, people who think that they know how reverse mortgages work are probably thinking about the way that they may have worked, you know, 15 years ago. So, mm. so that's well. Let's uh, let's get a little bit more into the academy. So, tell me a little bit more about that, please. Yes, well, um, it is being uh, directed by Dr. Craig Lemoyne, um, who runs the the uh, financial planning program there at the University of Illinois. And um, we have uh, about 13 members. Uh, our original ones were uh, Barry Sachs, who is both um, a PhD in physics from MIT and has a, a law degree in uh, tax law from Harvard. And so he was the uh, the person who came with the original math behind the idea of you know, how can I avoid having to draw on my portfolio? Uh, is there an alternative asset? Is there an asset that that is not correlated to what my investment portfolio is doing that I can temporarily use when the market, you know, you, you, looking forward to a retirement of 30 years or so, there are going to be dips in the market. And how can I protect my portfolio and not have to, to um, sell in, uh, out of a losing portfolio. So he was the, 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 the first person uh, who took a look at that. And since then, um, he has uh, attracted people like Dr. Wade Fow, uh, who's a professor of retirement income at the American College of, of Financial Services and a PhD in economics from Princeton. Um, and Dr. Uh, Jamie Hopkins, who is uh, the director of retirement research at the Car Carson Group, uh, I, I, you know, there's 13 of us. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but um, these are the folks who are are uh, the four that I mentioned who are sort of leading the charge, doing the research, and um, sort of um, beating the drum for financial advisors to uh, be thinking about the house uh, as an asset for their clients. I mean, one of the things that's really frustrating to us is that. Uh, Folks go for financial advice and, you know, are paying money for advice. And yet um, compliance departments for many financial advisors don't allow them to discuss the house at all, despite all of this research to demonstrate that it's in the client's best interest to at least at least take a look at um, what what uh, the portfolio um, could do if it if over time um, distributions were not taken in in bear markets. Yeah, no, I totally get it, and I remember that. That was pretty. Um, it's kind of interesting who makes that decision and how it's made, and it seems like it it, it just stays status quo, right? Like the compliance department's like, yeah. uh, I don't know if we should do this, and is everybody else doing it? It's one of those kind of like if everybody else is doing it, it's, it's acceptable, but nobody wants to be the one, right? Well, we, you know, luckily we've had five the broker dealers who have mm. who have dropped their prohibitions, but it is oh, it's kind wonderful. of a structural mm. problem. Yeah, it is. It, but it's a structural problem For because sure. um, the you know the the advisor can't get paid for a referral from a mortgage company. That's just not it's just not allowed. Yeah. yeah. And so there's no direct revenue coming in the door. So so you can understand why somebody in the compliance department would say, why should I take on any more responsibility or risk that these advisors are doing the right thing when there's no line item, you know, mm -hmm. there to, to justify my, my um, letting them do this. So that's just, you know, really unfortunate um, that, uh, but, and I do agree with you. It is, it's just kind of the, 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 the status quo wins. Um, so Definitely. what do you think um, – yeah, no, it just is. Um, so that being said, Shelley, 
So if somebody's listening to this and if they want to learn more about the, the academy or what you're up to, I mean, what's the best way for them to connect? Well, I would I would say um, the the first thing to do is go to um, is go to the website, the Academy of Home Equity and Financial Planning, University of Illinois. And there's just, you know, there's a bibliography of articles and, and websites and um, research papers and books and um, podcasts even that uh, we'll have to put this one on there. Um, so um, so that's a good place to start because that's going to be a, a sort of dispassionate, um, unbiased ap- approach to reading about the research that's out there. Um, the National Reverse Mortgage Lenders Association um, has a very good website as well. And then, um, you know, if you get to the point where you'd like to to um, talk to lenders, um, the National Reverse Mortgage Lenders Association can direct you to um, to uh, lenders. But I would just say to people who are on the line that, you know, don't be satisfied with just just sticking with one lender unless somebody has, you know, like your financial advisor may have recommended somebody that they know is trustworthy. I mean, just um, the luck of the draw, you know, when you get on the phone and you you really like somebody uh, who is uh, uh, selling a reverse mortgage, you know, go through the discipline of getting a couple of different quotes, probably three quotes, um, just to make sure that you're getting the best deal for yourself that you can. It's, it's not different than getting a regular mortgage. Um, you can negotiate the terms. And so I, it, 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 people are uncomfortable doing that, but um, you won't really know if you're getting the best, the best quote um, that you can get in, until you say to another lender, oh, I have a quote from lender A, you know, tell me what your best quote is. And so... That would be my recommendation um, to everybody, that uh, two or three quotes is always a good idea. Fantastic. Well, hey, Shelly, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your background and all the great things you're doing over at the Academy. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes Store. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Money, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the video. I'd love to hear what you're working on and what kind of projects you're up to. And Shelly, thanks again for coming on the show.